Hello everybody. Do you like stuff? Of course you do. Of course you do. Everyone likes stuff. Especially free and random stuff. Well, on this wall right here is a list of everything that could be yours. All of it. From the iron to the gold to the nickel and copper and diamonds and all this lovely blues powder. And coal. Coal. You can have coal. Uh, it all comes from this guy. The X Asterisk Automatic Sieve. I've heard it pronounced sieve. Is it sieve or sieve? I've always pronounced it sieve. But that's neither here nor there. Today. Today we have a tutorial. Whoa, ho, ho. Last time we had the, you know, good things about power, learning stuff about power. Well, today we're going to actually have a tutorial. So, I'm going to show you how to build my preferred setup for the automatic sieve. It has a couple of features that I think are useful, some of them which I think are mandatory, and it's pretty compact, but it works. So, you're going to need a few things. And by a few, I mean a lot. We're going to need a single piece of cobblestone, a single half slab, six blocks, doesn't matter what kind of blocks, I just use quartz, uh, two redstone torches, a repeater, a comparator, three redstone dust, and a toggle button. This can also be substituted for a switch or any kind of T flip flop, as long as it's one state says powered, the other state says unpowered. These f b buttons just do both. It's a T. It's it's a switch in a button form. You click it, it stays on. You click it again, it stays off. It's useful. Uh, bucket of water, bucket of lava. We are going to need 21 micro block covers. Now I use 20 glass ones and one solid one. That's just my preference. One of them does have to be solid. The other ones, they can be solid, they can be transparent, it doesn't matter. You're going to need a single drawer, a drawer, or a one time two drawer, and a drawer controller, three diamond chests, an auto packager, two transfer node energy, one ender collector, 10 item filters, four retrieval node for items, 11 transfer node for items nine transfer pipes, four filter pipes, eight energy pipes, and one world interaction upgrade. You are going to need a energy cell. It does not have to be the leadstone level. You can use any level you want, but it has to be a thermal expansions energy cell. You can't use quantum fluxes, quibit cells. They don't respond to redstone signal and it's kind of important. You are going to need five pulverizers, one redstone furnace, and the speed upgrades for them if you want, the secondary reception coil, the overclocked modular gearbox, and the space-time flux unifier. These guys, they're, they're pretty optional, but they're handy. You're going to need two automatic sieves. And their upgrades, the speed upgrade and the fortune upgrade, again, they're optional. These upgrades, they all pull a lot more power from the system. And it all depends on what kind of power you can give it. If you can't give it too much power, don't worry about these guys right now. When the time comes that you have the power, you can add them later. Uh, you'll also want a drawer key, which I guess goes with those guys, because you're going to want to lock these drawers. Now, did you get all that? Here, I'll get out of the way. You can take a screenshot, you can pause the video, make sure you have everything. And if we're all good, we should be all good. So let's start by grabbing everything. Everything. There we go. We don't need the upgrades right now. So, how this build starts and how we're going to do this is let's, let's go layer by layer. So if we actually come up a couple of blocks just so that we can be underneath the machine, we need a row of three 
and then we come behind it and go one, two, three. So that we've got this T shape. Oh, it's so complicated. It's scary. Make it stop. What we then need to do is we need a diamond chest there. And actually, it needs to be fa it doesn't need to be facing that direction, but the auto packager is going to sit right next to it. And we're going to have another diamond chest on the other side. This is because the auto packager takes input from its left. This is the front of it. Uh, it takes input from in inventory on the left and outputs it to the right. So it will take from this chest, put into that chest. Is it busy? We also then need a chest right in front of it. With me so far? I should hope so. So that's the chest. Uh, don't need those anymore. That's the auto packager. Don't need those. Next on the list. Coming out of this chest is where we need the solid cover. It needs to sit right on top of the power line. See? Look at that. Right on top of the power line. No longer need you. Now what we need is the comparator. And the comparator can sit right on that cover block. No longer need you. And see, if we put an item in here, it'll still read a comparator output. So that's pretty cool. So now we need one of our solid blocks. Stick the block right there. And we need another one. No. Another one right there. We take the repeater. Stick it right there. And y this can also be a micro block, but it doesn't really matter. So it can be a full block, it can be a half slab. Doesn't matter. Stick a block on its face. And I. I don't actually think we're going to do this layer by layer. I'm just going to do this section by section, I guess, is a better way to put it. We need two blocks there. Make sure you've got that dust there and put a torch on it. And then over here, we're putting another torch. So that's our torch is done. Now for our solid half slab, we just stick it right there done and then the last two pieces of dust go right on top and that's our redstone dust done so you got all that we've got this little loop make sure you got the redstone torch there and there they are one block apart one should be on one should be off by default now in front of this if we stick it right there is where the button will go and that will be our on off switch. So see if I click it on, that torch down there will turn on. This one turns off. If I click it off, it goes off. If I have it turned on and an item is in that chest, it goes off. So that's part of one of the crucial systems is overflow protection. We'll get to that. Sitting right there, we've got ourselves an energy transfer node connected to it. We go two blocks out and we want to take the energy cell. And we want to stick it right there so that it's right next to the torch. Uh, it doesn't have to be facing forwards through the torch. That's just the way I put it. And we want to configure its sides so that It is outputting to the bottom and to the side. So th this side and the bottom. So whichever way you have it facing, you need it to go into the machine and to the bottom. So it's powering this line. And so that it's powering that node right there. Now, of course, it has no power, but that's okay. Wherever you want its input from, you can do that. We're going to set its redstone control to high. This is the important part need to set this to high. This is the overflow protection. This is basically the system that says if this sieve overflows, 
which is a really bad thing, don't overflow your sieves, that this comparator will get an output and it will turn off this torch, which means the battery will die and the whole system will just turn off. So here, actually no, don't, what am I doing? What am I doing? That's not where the power is. Where's the power? I'm being silly. Orange is output, blue is input. So orange output, blue input. So this is where the battery gets its power because over here, kind of outside the purview of the machine, this is where you'll stick your power source. So for me right now, I'm just going to grab this guy. And actually those are the wrong pipes. We need this pipe. As explained in the last episode, over there at the power stations, uh, these pipes will pull energy from a device and put it into the batteries. See, there it goes. Battery charging. Okay, don't need you, don't need you, you're no longer part of this video. So that's charging up. And it should be charging, yeah, see, the transfer node's got power, and this transfer node's got power. Now this is a dedicated line of power. This will not shut off when the system does. And that's because what that powers is the, the processing. So we'll, we'll get to that. So what we need to do now is we need to place down the heart of the machine. We need to get the sieves and the pulverizers in place. Well, it's gonna be four pulverizers and two sieves. We're going to be running a sieve for dust and a sieve for gravel. Yes, there are other things to sieve. Actually, I guess I could have used those blocks still. Uh, there are other things to sieve, but this contraption, we're focusing on just those two things. Now, with these guys, if we clear all of them out, we then need blue on the back and output on the side. So output on the side, input on the back. Input, output, everything goes out. This, of course, is the other side. So that we have orange there, blue there. All inputs in the back, all outputs on the side. What we then need to do is we need to take four of our transfer nodes and stick them on the sides like that. That will allow us to take all of the outputs from these guys and move them about. From there, we need the filter pipes. They're ready on my hopper. Whoop. I forgot I wasn't standing on something. The filter pipes, and then just regular piping here and here. This is so that they actually have a connection so that the nodes can come up and go into here. Now from here, we need to go out. And this is actually where we need our piece of cobblestone. Right like that. So what I do, for a little trick in getting these micro blocks in place is I'll put the blocks like that and then you can just kind of stick the micro blocks against its surface and what we're putting here is the cobble generator and actually those are not there what needs to go underneath there is the drawers and the drawer controller in the middle there we go, before I screw this all up and forget. So, no longer need uh, the drawers. No longer need you guys, no longer need you guys, you're done. Okay, then what you can do, get rid of those. Put in your lava and your water. And using the block on top, we can use it as a guide to put down covers on the top so that nothing escapes. There we go, cobblestone, done. Using another one of our transfer nodes, stick it in the middle, world interaction upgrade. 
Now, you can have as many world interaction upgrades as you want, but one's good enough. Oh, let's grab a couple of pieces of this cobblestone. What we want to do is set the filters. So we're looking at the blue section. You can see it goes blue when it's in the machine and yellow and green and red when it's not. So we want cobblestone into the blue so that it only feeds cobblestone here. Now let's actually turn off the machine. Well, yeah, see, that is turning it off, but the power drain is, is very slow. Um, but it's not these guys you have to worry about. See, because these guys, once I have the system in place, they will just feed into these drawers. So what we can do is from here we can grab gravel, sand, and dust. And before anything gets too crazy we'll stick sand and dust in there and gravel in there and then we want to lock those drawers because we don't want any of that stuff getting unsorted so with me so far lost need me to slow down well too bad here we go we're going to connect up now the rest of the Civ system, which is going to be a whole lot of fun, and this is where it gets a little bit crazy. So keep with me. On the back of here, we need two retrieval nodes. Well, one of these is going to be for gravel. The other one is going to be for sand. Because these top two machines, they're turning cobble into gravel. They're also producing a side effect of sand, and, and that's good. Well, that will all get stored here. And I guess really we can we can pull that out. We can just do that and that. And actually then what we need is one of the microblock covers to stop it from going into this chest. Because see, it, it ended up with cobblestone there. And we don't want that. So make sure you have that cover on that chest. Problem is, is that they usually have to be in place after the pipe. So yeah. So here, we can see it's already starting to load up with gravel and sand. Perfect. So that's that system done. Now one of these will be for turning gravel into sand. The other one will be for turning sand into dust. Easy. Easy peasy. So for that, we'll need filters. Now over in this chest, I have all the filters laid out. Uh, this is the filters for the entire system. So you're going to need the 10 filters and one of them about that uh, one of them is going to need to be inverted that is done simply by crafting it with a redstone torch in a crafting table you are then also going to need all of these blocks so that you can set the filters this is all of the ore blocks from dust all of the ore blocks from gravel uh, the aluminum ones are in their own separate one because aluminum cannot be put through a pulverizer you have to skip the pulverizer stage and put it right into a furnace so they get its own they get its own filter you need two filters for gravel and you need one for sand one for dust one for blaze powder and then a filter and the single inverted filter you need to have block of flint block of gunpowder block of white dye glowstone redstone lapis lazuli block block of coal block of diamond and block of emerald this is part of the filter, it's just the chest isn't big enough. So, yeah, these, these go with these guys. This one with that one. It's, yeah. So, what we need first off then is... We can get rid of those guys from our inventory. We can grab a filter and some gravel. Because that's what we need right now. We need a filter for gravel and a filter for sand. So if you don't know how to set a filter, you hold it in your hand, you right click it, you drop the item in there, done. That filter is now set for gravel. This one, we want sand. Okay? So now what we do is, it doesn't really matter which machine, but we stick a retrieval node on the back of there and say gravel. See? Now this pulverizer will start grabbing gravel and turn it into sand. 
Now, if we go to this one and stick in the sand retrieval or the sand filter, this one will start grabbing the sand and turn it into dust. Now, all of our pulverizers are active. They will start producing sand and dust. Perfect. Next, we need another filter for more gravel. And we need filter for dust. We'll destroy those guys so we don't get confused. So we get a filter for gravel and a filter for dust. So it should say gravel and dust. Okay? And what we do is on the back of the sieves, we're going to slap those down. And I'm going to say gravel and dust. And of course, it's already grabbed some sand. So we'll just pull that out and pull that out. And they should load up with their appropriate thing now. Now... What we're going to want to do is is right now it's it's only connected to that one side. See if if we swing over here it, it, it pulls from this. And okay that works, but that's a really convoluted route. So we no longer need those guys, let's get rid of them. If we go to our transfer nodes, we can stick a transfer node right there. Then we can stick a cover over there and a cover over there because we've been getting cobblestone in that chest, which means it's turning into compressed cobblestone, sandstone. See, like it's, it's messing up. So we need those cover blocks to prevent that. So there we go. Now what it can do is it can pull straight from the drawer controller into here. So we've got dust flowing into that one, gravel flowing into that one. And if there was power in the system, they would start sieving. Well, we don't want that just yet. Next, what we do is we're going to stick a couple of transfer nodes right on the bottom. And look at that done. It connects right into the chest that we intended it to. Because it's perfect that way. So then what we want to do is this chest right here is the overflow. So if we stick a transfer node right there, it's going to connect. And we don't want that, so we're going to take a couple of microblock covers and get rid of that connection. Now what it has then is a connection to this chest. So this is the input chest. See, there shouldn't be any dust in there, but again, while we're building the system, it's, it's going to keep going. So this chest will be for overflow. Anything happens to pop out of the sieves that shouldn't, it'll get grabbed by that chest stuck in the transfer node and stuck right into the processing so that it can move along. Now, the way it does that is we have this guy, the ender collector. You stick him right on top of a chest and you can set its range by right clicking. Now, if we can get out of here and click it, you can see little purple clouds as it expands. And see right there at 2.5, it reaches the sieves. So if I were to drop something, woo, gone. Grabbed by the chest, moved over there, moved into here, done. Now if this was full because your system's backing up and you know, you're not processing things fast enough, your sieves would start to overflow. Well, this guy would grab it, stick it in this chest, and then into this transfer node. Well, if the transfer node cannot put items into this chest because it's full, well, this chest will start backing up, which means comparator signal, kill the battery, the whole system turns off, the sieves stop pumping out items, and you're all good. No more spill. Now, if your system happens to fix itself by, you know, your furnace was just too slow or something like that, well, that chest will eventually empty, which means the comparator will turn off and you'll be peachy again. So, in order to process your ore that you've been producing we need to move into the back here and we need the last pulverizer and a furnace now this guy he will have input from the bottom and output to the side this one again 
will output to the side, but this one also will have an input from the bottom and from the left because it's going to be taking input from the furnace and it's going to be taking input from the bottom. So here's where our last two filter pipes come in handy. Simple as that. Oop, I actually, my mistake, my mistake. I put these down a block too low. So we need to reconfigure them. There we go. That's where they're supposed to be. Okay, fil two filter pipes there. And what we need is a transfer node right there, right there, and right there. With me so far? So we got a transfer node on two sides of this thing, one facing into this pipe, one facing away from it, and then one on this side before the auto packager. Now, the one before the auto packager is for this one the blaze powder because blaze powder it, it can't be packaged it it has no squished form so you're gonna want to move that right to your storage which means all you gotta do stick a transfer pipe there if you want to you can put a cover there it, it, it's not necessarily required it's not gonna have any adverse effects if you don't but you can now this guy he's gonna be to, to help you out. He's going to move your your important stuff. Well, not the imp not necessarily that, you know, everything on this side is unimportant, but actually I guess we can delete those no longer needed. Um but you are going to need to set up a filter for all of this. So we just open it up. Shift right click everything in there and ta-da, it's just enough to fill the filter. So we want to stick that in there so that it pulls out from that one and it won't go down here because of course that's a transfer node we're good now we'll also need the inverted filter and again with all the exact same stuff as we just did and we want to stick that in this transfer node now so that's so that it only pulls out that side and not that side because these are two separate systems now in this one if we quickly clear out the inventory of all of this stuff we're going to start with the aluminum one and we set that just like that done so now here in the white slot we stick that for aluminum gravel and aluminum dust that's that it goes right into the furnace it skips the pulverizer because it is the one ore type that cannot be duplicated with the pulverizer. Now here comes the really fun part. Now you need to set up a filter within a filter. So we'll grab the dusts and we'll stick all of the dusts in there. Okay? Well, that only leaves us with one slot left. Well, fortunately, you can put filters inside filters so if we grab the other filter and all of the gravel and stick all the gravel in here we can then take the original filter with the dust and stick the filter that has all of the gravel and stick it right there so that when we look at it it lists all of the dust and all of the gravel which is just perfect so now that one goes in the white for the pulverizer. Got it? Uh, as for the filter that you just used for the gravel that you then put into the dust one, you can just clear it out, save the filter. It'll work. Now, what you then need is your output chest. This is where all your items are going to go, and it fits right here. It can be an ender chest. It can be another transfer node. Actually, no, it should be a chest. Uh, yeah, a, a chest or an ender chest, it, it's up to you. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to be using the void crate from Gany's End, uh, just because when it fills up, it keeps accepting, accepting items, it just deletes them. So, any and all items that get smelted will go right in there, but now we still want the 
all the blocks of diamond and redstone and lapis and the blaze powder. So we will need a couple more of our micro blocks. And we will need to do that and that. And do that. So that it's a separate line. Got it? Oh, we also don't want that. I'm pretty sure that's everything. So this right here then should be the system running by itself if we give it juice everything should kick to life all the machines will come alive all of the sieves will start sieving now if what we want to do for the sake of demonstration is to overclock this thing we can give it more power and we can give it these guys. That's not what I wanted it to do. Well, fine. Clear the inventory. If we get speed upgrades, fortune upgrades for each of the sieves. We can go completely nuts with them. Where is the power? Oh. <laughs> yeah, overclocking with that level of battery not really possible let's get ourselves a good one so with a resonant one that should be giving us the power we need or am I doing this wrong again Oh, there we go. Now it's got power. Now it's cooking. Now we're cooking with fire. Uh, but these things aren't processing very quickly. So we will need their augments as well. These are a little bit more annoying to place in, but that's okay. Once we get their speed upgrades, look at it go! It's going crazy! So yeah, if you have enough power, you obviously will have to upgrade the the battery. Just because it needs to output that much power. But we should already see stuff in here. So we're already seeing blaze powder, blocks of white dye, the ingots. We've got aluminum, gold, and iron. Two blocks of redstone already. Look at that. It's just processing some more iron. So we'll just speed these guys up too. And voila. Look at all this stuff we're getting. And it's going to come in pretty quickly. If we look in the output chest, look at this stuff. Look at all this stuff we're getting. And we go over here for the finished and see it's pulling out all of that stuff on this side and sending it straight into the chest and it's pulling out any ore on that side and then filtering it at this stage so whether it goes into the pulverizer or whether it's aluminum and it goes straight into the furnace and there we go look at it go so it's kind of compact kind of it's a little bit noisy let's actually turn that down Now, the advantages of this system over, say, other Civ setups is, one, you have this button here that as soon as you click it, done. See? Turned off. Out of power. Now, obviously, you'll want speed upgrades and stuff like that in these guys. I just don't have them right now for the sake of the demonstration, which is why these Civs are filling up. So if I were to actually leave that running chances are we would see an overflow pretty quickly. Maybe. I don't know. But if there was an overflow, this ender collector would grab it, and as I explained earlier, it would shut off the whole system by killing the battery power. So this right here is kind of the end of the line for the system. Um, wherever your power is, 
it needs to come into this block right here. So the cord that goes underneath the battery is where your power input should be. Don't put it right into the battery. Put it right here because it needs a dedicated line to come down for these guys. Because if the system backs off, if this chest fills up, everything's spilling, it shuts down. Okay, well, it's killed power to the whole system then in terms of the sieves and the pulverizers. But if you turn off your auto packager, your pulverizer back here and your furnace back here, that means that it can't process this stuff. This chest will stay full because this chest will stay full. But if you're processing the ore, this will slowly empty. And if the auto packager still has power, this will slowly empty. So these guys, they need their dedicated power line. They're separate from the rest of the system. There's no connections to them. They're not gonna power those guys. So, there it is. There's my sieve setup. You keep it running. You give it a good amount of juice. It'll do you good. You, you gotta put speed or stack upgrades in all of these guys so that it moves faster. Because right now, as you can see, it's a little bit slow. But if we grab a whole bunch of these guys and say, you know, stack upgrade, half a stack of speed upgrades. Oh, look at it go, look at it go. See, now it's gonna go really crazy. Why are you not even searching? Hmm. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You should search. There's the line right here. I admit, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, it works in my other setup. That one works. And that one's even more disconnected. I am a little bit confused. But that it making no sense. All right. Well, for starters, here we've got an example of it overflowing. Did you see the little purple particle effects? There, there it goes. See, that's it's overflowing because these nodes aren't fast enough. Now, if I were to put that and that in there. Oop, d empty. Done. So, yeah. Give them good upgrades. They'll, they'll stay empty. You'll have a hard time overflowing them. Your chest will be the issue here. Now, as for the reason why this thing wasn't working, it's because I'm a derp head. Uh, the power is right here. The redstone signal. It's turning it off. So, what you're going to have to do then is move this. A one block over. Uh, Ta-da. Now this guy will work. See, there we go. It outputs. It still has the same power system. I mean, you can move this button anywhere you want. This button can go anywhere. It's this system right here that, you know, turns off the battery and stuff like that. So that can snake anywhere you want. So I don't know why I didn't catch that. Like I said, I'm a derp. I'm not perfect at this either. So yeah, but with speed upgrades and stuff like that, the sieves are going crazy. In this chest, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Auto packagers going crazy. Here we've got a whole bunch of stuff. It's all being smelted. It's all going crazy. It's pretty cool, hey? So, yeah. There we go. Hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully it's what you wanted. Hopefully it's useful, and hopefully it stops some of the overflows that keep happening on the server. So, leave me a like, 
give it a comment. Let me know what you thought. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Was I too much of a derp? Did I go too fast? Was it too confusing? Let me know. If you need to see this in world, it will be in the Izuminati Patreon server where you guys know me from, at least a bunch of you guys. You can come see it there. You can come ask me questions. Hopefully it's useful to you guys. Hopefully it gives you some inspiration to build a over overpowered, non-spilling sieve setup for yourself. But until next time, until next time, I'm going to go fall into the void.